We're watching films on the toilet Cause that's what dads have to do When the movie's unsuitable for your kids Then pretend you need a number two If you need a break from your family or spouse There's a lavatorial picture house Watch Terminator 2 while you're sitting on the loo Enjoy the whole of Rambo 4 with your trouts on the floor We're watching films on the toilet How about you? Pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Yes. Oh! I 100% would have thought you'd be a pineapple pizza person. Why? Oh, hang on. I, it's because it's a fruit, isn't it? And could yeah. therefore be seen as in some way good for you. So you would not be <laughs> you would not be interested in it. Uh, fair. No, fruit. I can't do fruit and food. I mean... Savory is a savory, <laughs> sweet is sweet. I can't... I don't like to blend. Fruit is a food, though. Mmm... Yeah, but it's not food. Mm. So, okay, where do you stand on cranberry sauce with your roast dinner? No, cranberry sauce, mango chutney, none of that, thank you. Yeah. In fact, you told me for your Christmas dinner there's nothing you like better than a big tablespoon of salad cream. <laughs> That's what you have with yours. That's the entirety of the dinner. Massive tablespoon of salad cream and you're happy. Massive tablespoon of salad cream, shot of vodka, mm-hmm. smash up the tree. That's normally what happens. That's it. Did you do that in your house? The the old smash up the tree tradition? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I tell the kids every year I say I've hidden some money inside the tree. Yeah. You have to it's like a pinata, yeah. you have to smash it open. That's right. We well, have to come at it with a bat, don't you? Yeah. And then yeah. when they find out there is no money, I'm just like, Well, jokes on you. Now tidy this shit up. <laughs> I mean, what about chutney with uh your, your cheeses in a meal? I'm not really into dairy. The thing that worries me about this conversation is that listeners might go away thinking, oh, Ben's something of a food snob. And that could not be (laughs) further from the truth. No, I just have preferences. I remember your breakfast used to be like a big bag of crisps, some sweets and a can of Coke. That was your breakfast. Yeah, no, that's I don't have that anymore. I had, what did I have for breakfast this morning? I had uh, actually had leftover curry for breakfast this morning, (laughs) which I haven't done for a while. You know, it was there and uh, it was pretty good. Did you whiz it up with a coffee and uh, some other leftover stuff like Arnie does in... uh, (laughs) In End of Days. End of Days, yeah. Yeah, I had... um, I did put some Haribo in there as well. Oh, delicious. A couple of eggs and uh, a a lot of cat food as well, actually. Cat litter as well you often put in (laughs) it, which kind of solidifies it. It And then you'll roll it out on a baking tray. (laughs) Yeah. Cut it into bars, which you can then eat on the go. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing when you blend it, you get a couple of rotations. So it's... And then the whole thing just solidifies in a block. (laughs) Yeah, they roll it out. It lasts a couple of weeks, actually. Yeah. Anyway, welcome to Watching Films on the Toilet. We talk about films a bit, but mostly just absolute drivel. Yeah, I'd say it's like an 80-20 split. Yeah. Just like a Kermode and Mayo That's their ratio. Kermo does all the film, doesn't he? And Mayo will chip in. He's very much the Mayo of that equation. He just helps the information slide down a bit easier. (laughs) So what's Mark Kermo? He's the (laughs) Kermo. Okay, right. Yeah. Simon Mayo's the Mayo, like the mayonnaise that helps it going down. And Mark Kermo is the (laughs) Kermo. That... That talks about the films. So it makes, yeah, that's the Kermo. Yeah, he's the. Good. Um, so, we're a couple of dads who don't have a lot of time to ourselves. So, we watch the violent films that we want to watch on our own mm. in the toilet. So, no one can disturb us. Yeah. And that's what we talk about, <clears throat> sort of. Yeah. I mean, feel free to go away and think, oh, it's a bit childish. But actually, when you break it down, the format's pretty robust. So, suck it. Yeah. Fucking suck it. <laughs> Welcome. Yay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Anyway, yeah, thanks for tuning in. So today we are going to be discussing 2021's DC James Gunn directed Suicide Squad. Ooh. So cool. We'll be chatting about that later. Yeah. We've got a little bit of correspondence this week. A couple of episodes ago, we introduced a little game we like to play where we have an imaginary actor, an imaginary mm-hmm character they play and the imaginary film they star in Mm. and uh, one of our listeners craig egg got in touch uh he's given us one this week oh yeah which is great so i'll read it out now we ready yeah yeah vernon deltoid is 
wrong buns in Hunter Finder. Ooh. Good one, Craig, right? I thought there was going to be another word at the end of that. That was it's it. Not, it's just, just two, Hunter Finder. Just Hunter Finder. What would the Hunter Finder do? Look for hunters. I, I can only guess. <laughs> yeah. We had another listener wrote in. Oh, right. And their name is Sadie McDermott. Oh, thank you, Sadie. She said, Troy Vincent is Roy Vincent in The Harder They Mincent. <laughs> Wow, the harder they mince in. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it's a coincidence that Troy Vincent got involved in this project that happened to have things that rhyme with his name? I or? think it's just one of those, the stars align, everything went right. Yeah, definitely. Don't really know what mincent means, but if you know, <laughs> then please let us know. <laughs> well, that, thank you to Craig Egg and Sadie McDermott. <laughs> Dermott. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> it's really nice to hear from some of our listeners and if you've got some ideas for a fake movie then please send them in we have another bit of correspondence okay as you know imagine entertainment have been very interested in some of our film projects we've come up with mm. we've got a letter from them oh okay hi this is the movie's Ron Howard. I just wanted to give you a few updates on that top secret project we're working on. So please don't play this message on your show. <laughs> <laughs> so we've had a team of uncredited writers locked in a hotel room for three months, and they've managed to put together a great script about a team of Uber driving zombies who plan to steal a fleet of trucks carrying human waste from a Korean excrement farm. They may not be smart, but they sure can drive. The Lego playsets are looking great. As soon as the script is ready, it'll be handed over to a well-known screenwriter who'll make just enough changes to justify their credit on the movie with the Writers Guild. So it's all very exciting. Oh, and there is one more thing. My good buddy James Cameron has jumped on board as an executive producer. He wasn't overly pleased when he found you guys were involved. He mentioned something about accusations of nepoticide in a deep diving submersible. And he said it's either you guys or him. So we chose him. We feel pretty bad. Hope there are no hard feelings. Thanks, guys. There we go. That sucks. I knew he'd be back to screw us over. He is back, like the titular character from two of his most famous movies. <laughs> Avatar and The Abyss. Avatar and Piranha 2, The Spawning. Yeah. He'll be back. I No, don't get it. Yeah, I mean, you started that bad blood and it looks like we're going to keep paying the price. I mean, might as well double down now on all the other stuff I have to say about James Cameron. Oh, I'm fairly sure this is a at least a triple down by now. <clears throat> I mean, I, mm. I'd go so far as to say he has murdered someone, not a family member, maybe a vagrant, <laughs> someone who would be easy to cover okay. up. He's just right. flirting with the idea at the moment. Maybe a dog. He's catnapped or dognapped someone else's pet. Yeah. Then I think he's taken one of those big metal spikes from Terminator 2 and uh, I'm afraid he skewered that poor cat. And I think when he did it, he felt such a huge surge of adrenaline. It made him sick, but it couldn't contain his glee. Okay. That's the treat he allows himself when he raps on each subsequent Avatar <laughs> sequel. He dulges his, his sickest fantasies, goes on the prowl around LA. Wow. Dog napping, and then just <laughs> takes him to the container that he owns in the middle of the Mojave Desert. Yeah. And just, uh, I'm afraid for those poor cats and dogs, it's, to quote another of his famous characters, it's game over, man. Oof. Okay. Hang on. I Oh, no, I think we've got another message from Ron Howard. Oh, okay. Let's Hang have on. a listen. Let me just play it. Hi, guys. I've just spoken to James Cameron, and he said if you're willing to apologize, then maybe we can continue working on the project together. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Uh, uh. <sighs> Thanks a lot, Eamon. I think we'll just have to come up with another really good project, and hopefully we'll get some more, some more traction on that. 
you think we could make a project about James Cameron's night stalking activities where he goes catnapping? We could make one of those true crime documentaries about it. Great, we can make a podcast. Let's make a podcast about James Cameron. Okay, perfect. Where he, he steals pets, goes to his container in the middle of the Mojave Desert, yeah, and then has at them. Fine, all right, whatever. Let's move on to the toilet news. Yay, okay. Holiday Park asks guests to clean toilets after staff pinged by app forced to isolate. Oh. An email titled Dunkirk Spirit was sent to guests by the owner of Mother Ivy's Bay Holiday Park in Padstow Corner. Oh, hell yeah. After two staff members were pinged by the NHS COVID app to isolate. So basically, this guy runs a holiday park and the people who clean the toilets both had to self isolate. Mm. So, in a bid to rally the spirit. He sent them an email saying, clean the toilets, please, <laughs> to, to, to the people who are paying to stay there. <laughs> oh, God. And he was trying to, I mean, it feels like quite a reach, equating it with the Dunkirk spirit. Yeah. Getting a few other makes clean bogs, not quite the same as uh, evacuating 350,000 people facing certain death no, it's from not. the beaches of France. But nice try. Oh, come on, guys. Let's rally together and get this done. Come on. Once upon a time, I worked on a building site, and I was basically like the skivvy, mm. and I just had to do all the basically what I was told. And they just threw bricks at you, didn't they? <laughs> they mainly like entertainment. They throw bricks at me. Taking bricks is is what they called it. They'd sit inside the wheelbarrows and make me give them rides around <laughs> the site. It really hurt my arms. No, nope, that wasn't fast enough. Time to take another brick, Amen. <laughs> yeah, and one of the jobs I had to do was clean out the toilet there. Oh. Bear in mind, this is like a por- the portaloo on a building site okay i remember once i cleaned it and then i and then i went away to do something else came back to use it and it was like an absolute disgrace after about 10 minutes Ugh. okay anyway that's a long way of saying i was able to do that amongst all my many mm. other chores i feel like this guy he's basically trying to pull a fast one invoking the spirit of, du- of dunkirk yeah. saying please clean the toilets or is that something he could do at the end of the day? Yeah. I mean, maybe if he'd gone full Dunkirk on the holiday, yeah. letting off bombs and... <laughs> or maybe if he had the timeline of the toilet cleaning, that was like a fractured narrative. That would be good. Yeah. There's someone did a really long wee, yep. which took like a week. Yes. And then someone came in and did a dump that took like a couple of hours. Yeah, I think maybe swap those around. A really long dump. Yeah. And then some short wees. A long wee and a short wee. Yeah. And then... Uh, Tom Hardy was in there yeah. going, Well done, cleaning up the toilet. So, Barry, the wheel be over soon. <laughs> are you hitting the verte? Or are you splashing the bell? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, Christopher Nolan might want to speak to us about Tell that. Tell you what, I'd rather watch that film about a toilet being cleaned than Tenant again. Jeez Louise. Oh, God. It's the first bad Nolan film. I think there are others you can say... Oh, it, it lacks heart or emotion, whatever. But yeah, technically they're very good, and there are moments of this which are technically good, but it's impossible to follow the action. Like that whole end battle, you're supposed to be wowed by, but I was just like, I can't follow this yeah. at all. My favourite scene was the little fight in the kitchen. Yeah, I think that was probably shot by a second unit director who is familiar with stunt work and fight scenes because it was a way better fight than anything that's been in any Christopher yeah, really, Nolan film I before. totally agree. That's a really good it fight. It had impact. I'd say one thing that you have in common, though, with that film is that your butt is travelling backwards in time, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> My butt? Yeah. Yeah, well, it's very difficult to keep it under control. It's getting younger and firmer as the rest of your body is getting and smaller. gross and saggy and smaller, yeah. I look very small in the middle. Mm. But, but the, the the anus... <laughs> I meant the middle of my body. <laughs> Not the middle of your butt. <laughs> no, my hips are tiny. That's right. I've got a, a three-year-old boy's hips, yet a nearly 40-year-old man's... Dingus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, shit, set myself up for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? Dingus. Do you know what? I never used that word. It just popped into my head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, mm. in summary, if I went on holiday and I was asked to clean my own toilet, I'd be asking for a refund. Yeah, I would just, just ignore the email. Yeah. Um, 
You got any more? I've got one more. Okay, cool. No, you wanted to move on then, but you have to wait, no, wait no, for no. the toilet news. Uh, no, I love the toilet news. How dare you? Good. Okay, here we go. Top 50 most common family arguments include toilet roll, mm. TV remote, and messy bedrooms. Okay, yeah. Uh, fighting over the TV remote, failing to load the dishwasher, squeezing rubbish into a full bin are among the 50 most common household arguments a study has found. Mm. A poll of over 2,000 UK adults found the average household has 21 disagreements each week, many of which are over something trivial. Yeah. Many rows occur in the bathroom as family members get frustrated at each other, not changing the toilet roll tube and it's empty, or even failing to flush the loo, mm. uh, and leaving wet towels on the floor. I can tell you, if you leave wet towels on the floor, you're a bloody animal. My sons do that. Oh, uh, do they? It's just more like grown-up kids. Yeah, grown-up kids should know better. I mean, we don't have any of those arguments in my house, because we just take it all out on Jason. Yeah, of course, he was your butler, for those who don't yeah, know. Yeah, Jason the butler. You know, if the bin is full or the dishwasher's empty, Jason! Mm -hmm. It's good, actually, because it means that we have more time for each other, we don't have arguments. We just we just really, really lay into Jason. Yeah, in fact, the, the only arguments you ever really have is like you're cross that Jason isn't more forlorn. Yes, <laughs> that's true. He's always perky. Yeah. Like, oh, hello, Mr. Sir. That's what he calls me. Mr. Sir. It's very much like the handmaid's tale, isn't it, inside your house? <laughs> Blessed day, Jason. <laughs> what about you? Do you argue over these things? You usually fight over the, like, the last scrap of meat. On chicken bone. Who gets to eat the chicken bone? Yeah, whose turn it is to have the jumper. Oh. Things like that. The jumper. Whose jumper was it originally? It came with the house. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so who does it... <laughs> oh, the house jumper. Yeah, yeah know. you know, the who house jumper. It, who does it fit? best fits my young son the best so you're kind of you don't really need it you just you just want it don't you i'll put it on, on my top of my face around my head yeah that's how i'll wear it i'd love to see that jumper you never see it it's too precious can't can't let anyone else see, have a look at it fair enough yeah you can't let anyone else see your family jumper that's like a basic rule good well that was a lovely set of toilet newses yeah it was a good one that yeah, strong yeah so let's move on to suicide squad Boop. <laughs> How did you see this film, Eamon? How did you sit it? So I watched this in the pictures. Yes. Because uh, I'm a law binding citizen. Law binding. A binding. Yeah, that's right. That's how I say that word. You bind the law. I bind to the law. Yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> so it took me three sittings because I did the two toilets. Okay, good. Well, I'm glad you visited the toilet. Yeah, I have a sense of uh, purpose. I was a bit disappointed because I, I went back to the cinema. You probably remember I bored a hole mm -hmm. in the side of the toilet cubicle so I could see into the screening room. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the film playing next to the toilet was Fast 9. Uh. And that's not the film we're talking about this week. So I had to go into the screen uh, and watch Suicide Squad. I mean, I feel like you glossed over that incident quite a lot because you actually ended up drilling into the back of some poor woman's <laughs> head, didn't you? It wasn't her head. It was her arm. Okay. And she was fine. She was fine. Yeah. You sweet talk to her really well, I have to say. Yeah, she can still use one arm. She's what I'm going to do about this hole in my fine. arm. And you just shrugged your shoulders and said, don't worry about it. Well, I, all she could see was my eye. So I just... <laughs> I just winked and left. So, yeah, that was the sittings. Okay, so what did I have to drink? I had, you know, Sylvester Sloan's in this movie playing a big shark. Mm. He famously drinks uh, a load of eggs in Rocky. Yeah. So I drank a load of eggs, but uh, not chicken eggs. I drank pigeon eggs. <laughs> oh, how, how did they go down? Well, I didn't end up doing a wee. But uh, I did go to hospital with uh, <laughs> abdominal cramps. Okay. I was in hospital. I was in the operating theatre for one minute, 28 <laughs> seconds. Uh, and that's the time I have. Brilliant. Okay. Are you all right? It's fine now. Yeah. Good. It doesn't require any follow-up questions. So away you go. Okay. So my summer week will contain the entire film. So spoiler alert, if you don't want to hear it, fast forward. About a minute and 20 seconds. Although, if you don't listen to the summary and you've not, don't know what the film's about, then why the hell are you listening to us chat about it? Yeah, maybe come back in a month or so when you've managed to see it. <sighs> yeah, come back in a month. <laughs> He's not having it. He is not having it today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. 
Okay, all right, three, two, one, go. So, two teams of criminals are sent to a South American island to destroy a top-secret weapon that's fallen into the hands of a mad dictator with the promise that their prison sentences will be reduced if they complete the mission. First team of incompetent villains is sent in to draw the attention of the dictator's army and is immediately obliterated, with the exception of the team leader Joel Kinnaman and Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn. So the second team, led by Idris Elba, can infiltrate the island and get the job done. Along the way, the team of seemingly heartless murderers grow quite fond of each other and then discover the top secret weapon is a massive alien starfish that feeds off the consciousness of innocent bystanders, which was hidden on the island by the US government. Rude. John Cena's peacemaker turns against the team in an attempt to cover up the corruption, but thankfully he fails and the remaining members of the team combine their powers to take down the kaiju starfish and save the island. And using the proof of the US's involvement in the huge starfish project, they're able to blackmail their way to freedom. The end for now. Oh, well, one minute and 12 seconds. You absolutely crushed it. Oh. So, my colleague, Eamon, yeah. what do you think of the Suicide Squad? I thought it was pretty good. And actually what I, th- I found was, contrary to almost every other film, and certainly every other comic book film, I thought the end mm. was far stronger than the beginning. Really? To begin with, I was just like, oh, this is fine. But by the end, I was like, oh, this is really enjoyable. Did you not enjoy, enjoy the obliteration of the first team? It reminds me a little bit of that scene in Deadpool where yeah. his gang yeah. all sort of die f- comedy deaths. I, I really liked how it set up the idea that no one was safe. I think that's the, the biggest issue I have with comic book movies is you know that the most of the characters aren't going to die, yeah. which takes away the stakes, really. He, I think James Gunn is an excellent writer and the way he made them sympathetic, even though they're all mm. horrible, I did warm to them all. And I was sad to see them go. Yeah, I, I really like... What's he called? The guy with the colourful dots. Oh, the polka dot polka guy. dot guy. Every part of his story, yeah. Especially his visions <laughs> with his mum. I thought it was amazing. What do you see, Eamon? I was wondering what... If we were to... If James Gunn was to project your vision of the world, what does everyone look like for you? Your mum. My mum. I thought it might be. I, th- I thought you might say that. Just everyone. Everyone looks everyone like looks my mum. looks like your mum, your mate. <laughs> And how's that make you feel? Sick as a dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That's sweet. She'll never watch this film, no. so I think we're safe. Yeah, what about you? What would you see? Know, what would I see? I think everyone might look like... Crisps? Yeah, everyone's just a big packet of crisps to me. <laughs> and, you know, some people are like tangy cheese Doritos, mm. pretty hot. Yeah. And other people are just, oh, salt and vinegar quavers. I don't like them. A nice and spicy knick-knack. You might be sitting next to them on the train. That uh, can be a little bit awkward. Uh, don't want to look them in the eye. Well, like when you see a hot woman, is it like a, a packet of nice and spicy knick-knacks? You're like, oh, oh, look at them nobbles. Is that what you said to yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Lovely, happy people might be a packet of Monster Munch. Mm. And yeah. what do you feel, what do you feel about sopping wet? pork scratchings that still have that still have hair on them i mean let's not go there what oh why not i mean anytime I anyone just, says let's not go there to me that's like an invitation for me to to, to like immediately i want to to go to, there to go there yeah <laughs> hang on wet, so wet pork scratchings with hair on yeah some of them get treated where by i think all all the kind of wet oh. fat is removed so you have this kind of dry oh, puffy God scratching for some which is Mm. i think it's the more traditional ones i think they just like take the skin and fat chuck it into a deep fat fryer then smash it up with a hammer and pop it into bags that's a toxic friend who you know that you shouldn't be spending time with but you do it anyway Mm. as soon as you spent half an hour with them you think my god i shouldn't have done this and i'm not going to do it again but then but you know you'll do it again before you know it you're back recording another podcast the following week exactly (laughs) exactly i didn't i didn't say it i didn't want (laughs) to I'm glad you caught on. You're a toxic colleague. We're not friends anymore. We're colleagues, so it's fine. Ben was getting upset before the podcast because I was was hurrying him up saying, you know, let's get get on with it. And uh, I had to point out to him that because we now work together, we can't really consider Mm. ourselves friends. Um, No. And I'm... Initially, that upset me, but now... You've come around to it pretty quick since our chat (laughs) earlier on. Really quickly. Mm. Um, In a way, it's it's easier dealing with each other as colleagues. It's much easier. We can be much more honest with each other, can't we? We don't need to, to ask each other questions about their family that we don't care about. No. Nope. Should we keep this joke in? It's not a question. It's just, it's not in there anymore. I would say if you have a, someone who you're friends with, who you don't want to be friends with anymore, just launch a podcast with them. 
<laughs> solve all your yeah. problems. It works really well. You know, obviously, like, you know, cho- choose a tactful tone. Like, don't pitch them a podcast called, like, My Friend Dan is a Twitter. <laughs> for example like they they wouldn't like that well it, um, you could just cut to the chase yeah <laughs> hey dan thinking about launching a podcast do you want to join me it's called my friend dan is a twat oh that sounds good you got to make called dan <laughs> <laughs> um how do you feel about harley quinn's vignette i suppose where she went off into she was seduced by the uh, dictator and then had to deal with the consequences. I really liked that that guy's turn from like the reasonable mm. one to like the absolutely yeah. insane guy with a horrible plan. Yeah. And yeah. then I also really liked the fact that she shot him like immediately. I just yeah. thought, oh great, that is we we it knew we thought we knew where this film was going, but now because she's killed him, who knows what's going to happen next? And and I really yeah. And and it's so often things like that happen where you go, well, you have an opportunity to to do something to take care of this guy but you're not doing it you're just letting them monologue so it's really satisfying to see that happen no i i felt it was the first appearance of harley quinn where she has been proper harley quinn she was just mad complete insanity off the leash you know she was well up for the mission she she just she just wanted to get in trouble Mm. i don't remember it so well and i don't really know the comics and i've not seen birds of prey actually but it did seem in the the first suicide squad that she was so in the Joker's thrall that that was like yeah. her defining personality trait rather than like being a character in her own right. I see. I mean, I think she she isn't she's an R-rated character if you're going to do it properly. She's like Deadpool. Right. She's not just this cute cosplay character. Yeah. She's mad. She is the Joker's girlfriend. She's crazy, just like mm-hmm. he is. She kills people. That's how it should be. And in this, she she murdered a lot of people. I mean, they all did. Yeah. But we like them. James Gunn's he was fired from Disney and then kind of got straight on board with mm. this. But I, you can tell that he, he just let it all out. It was just like unrestrained madness. It's interesting. I think I, it, it's, I, didn't, I did enjoy this film, but I think I did prefer Guardians of the Galaxy. In this, mm. you can sort of just like a little bit of obvious violence or gore can be kind of like a crude punchline. Whereas I feel yeah. like... You think it has more impact if it's used sparingly? Well, yeah. If you have that option taken away from you, you have to be more creative in terms of your joke telling. What about the scene where Bloodsport and John Cena were kind of having a kill-off? That was really funny. And the fact that they killed all those people unnecessarily. I thought it was brilliant. <laughs> There's one bit where John Cena walks past the guy sleeping and stabs him really nonchalantly about five times. <laughs> and I don't know why, but that was funny. But there's another bit where they're having a conversation and John Cena shoots the guy in the arm and Idris Elba goes, ah, you, you didn't hit him properly. And he goes, but it, look, it's an exploding bullet. Exploding bullet. And then Idris Elba says something like, yeah, but you, you know, that was superfluous. And he goes, yeah, but it wasn't it's not superfluous if it's a sick ass move. And then <laughs> yeah, under his breath, right. Idris Elba goes, no, oh, he's right. Yeah, that was really funny. I think a lot of work had to be done for you to warm to the characters because they're hopeless, not immediately likable maybe that had to come in front of the the funniness sometimes and i think it, i think it worked so if you were going to join a suicide squad mm-hmm. uh what, what would your terrible superpower be oh i thought you were going to ask me who would my squad be and and therefore because death was so likely i would then just <laughs> fill it with people who i detest <laughs> james corden you're on point <laughs> Josh Widdicombe, here's your assault <laughs> rifle. Oh, no, no, it's so heavy. Can I have another gun? You'd have quite a big team. Keep going. There would be, yeah. Would James Cameron be in it? Of course he would. Yeah. Okay. Like, stop him from rustling cats and dogs. He'd, he'd, be, he'd be good, actually. What would your horrible superpower be? Maybe the ability to eat a lot of crisps. Not enough that it would make you go, oh, my God, but just, like, you think, oh... He's eating quite a lot of crisps. So, I mean, are we, are we just talking about, like, our most mildly interesting characteristic? Or yeah, are we inventing yeah. a superpower for ourselves? Yeah, but I think I think that's... Well, because the superpowers were so weak, I think we can do that. Yeah, okay. So what would yours be? I probably mine just being, being really funny. <laughs> really funny colleague. It's really Yeah, really funny... Not friend anymore. Nope, but, uh, not a friend. Colleague. Ah, oh, that Eamon. God, he's, I've known him for years. He's such a funny colleague. 
Is that what you say to your wife when yeah. we uh, finish recording? No, it's when you were one of my best men. That um, that's why that's how I sold it. <laughs> it's almost like this was put in place before we started doing the podcast. Yeah, we've been looking for years to do something with this. You know, I mean, it's, it's an exaggeration to call it chemistry, but it's n- it's not nothing. It's not nothing. No, there isn't. There isn't. There isn't nothing. <laughs> that's, that should be the tagline of this podcast. It's not nothing. It's an enviable working relationship. That's how people would look at it. That's exactly right. If you're yeah. out with your colleague and you've just gone to get your meal deal from Tesco and you're yeah. like, oh God, counting down the minutes till you get back to your desk. Yeah. Then you saw me and Ben in the, the queue just ahead of you. The bants would be tight. Yeah, you see the tight bants. Yeah. And you're like, oh, I wish I wish I had that with this with my colleague. Yeah, I wish I had tight pants. After a five minutes, you'd be like, God, they've not mentioned each other's family at all. No. They never say anything personal. No, they, they, they're clearly colleagues. They're not friends. Yeah, they're not friends, these guys. Yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, to be honest, as much as we've joked about this, our relationship has always essentially been not mentioning anything personal and just trying to make as many jokes as possible. Yeah, I don't know the name of your wife or your children. Neither do I. They become handy verbal props when we're constructing jokes. Yeah, that's it. Each other. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Ben, what are you going to do with this old film? Are oh, you going to make me choose first again, are you? Um, oh, definitely fish this mm-hmm. out. I've been to the cinema a few times since I was allowed to again. And I'd say this is, this is definitely the most fun mm-hmm. I've had at the cinema recently. And yeah, it was, it was refreshing. I think superhero movies have a lot of legs. I certainly don't think they're done. People just need to be creative, and it'll be interesting to see where where it goes next. Mm. What about you? I would uh, fish this one out. Mm. I don't. I disagree. I don't think superhero films do have the legs. I think you're wrong. I think okay. you're bang out of order. Don't like your attitude, and yeah. uh, also don't don't like your wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, you should bring her into it. No, I, I do sort of agree. I think, but I think. They do have a future, but only in this kind of film. Like, uh, I, I, I don't want to see like another twenty film arc that ends in the Avengers End Game. Like, I'm not interested in doing that again. Yeah. So that means, Eamon, <gasps> that this film not only goes in the tank of glory, oh. but has to replace something else. Oh man. So what what have we got in there at the moment? In the tank of glory, we have Midnight Run. Yeah. Brawl in Cell Block 99, Hard Boiled, Seven, and Don't Breathe. So one of these has to be fished out of the Tank of Glory and flushed away and replaced with the Suicide Squad. It's a toughie. Which one's it going to be, Eamon? I would probably mm. say Don't Breathe. Or actually maybe Hard Boiled. I'd throw Hard Boiled out of there. You know, I know this is a podcast, but you can't see the expression that I made just then when Eamon chose Hard Boiled. It was a shock face emoji. That's <laughs> well, what it was. Uh, ben and our guest, uh, Russ, uh, who we had on, were so passionate about it. I kind of got swept along with their passion, but in, in retrospect, I thought it was fine. Mate, mate, colleague, Hard Boiled is one of the greatest action films of all time. I'm not having it's it, got mate. a few I'm good slow it. motion bits in it, but you don't give a damn about any of the <laughs> characters because they all just kill everyone and don't care. He's, tr- he's trying to wind me up. I'm not he's winding it. That's true, up. isn't it? No. No, you love you, you love Chariot. No, Pat. you don't. It's, it sets up this bizarre world in which they can kill everyone, and from then on, you do like them. So hard-boiled? No. It would be between Seven and Don't Breathe for me. I really like Don't Breathe. Well, let's leave it in, and let's, let's ditch hard-boiled. I think, I think we can agree no. that hard-boiled... <laughs> God, no. Is... No, we'll get we'll get rid of don't breathe. We'll get don't breathe's coming out. The suicide squad. No, I've changed out. my mind. Hard boiled. I feel like this is going to go on for quite a while if if you keep on with this. We didn't completely think through this this format because no one has a deciding vote. It really does just come down to who's willing to to pay the most in broadband fees. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so basically whoever's connection falters first, whoever gets a lag, <laughs> That's right. they lose. Yeah, so if you say hard-boiled, feel free to disagree. And then if Ben's then lagging so badly he can't disagree, I'd be like, great, hard-boiled it is. <laughs> <laughs> or if I say don't breathe, yeah. can come out, 
and Eamon doesn't reply, then we can remove don't breathe. And that's so, it. Fortunately for you listeners, you're about to, to miss the next 48 hours standoff <laughs> that Ben and I now have. And I'm actually in Spain right now, right. Uh, meant to be enjoying a holiday. But I guess, I guess I'm going to have to tell my wife and kids that I'm unwilling <laughs> to, to stand down right. until Eamon's connection inevitably lags. I um no I I I'm happy to to take out don't breathe I probably if you gave me the choice of watching these two films again I probably would choose Suicide Squad out of the Suicide Squad don't and Don't Breathe yeah if you say you have to watch one okay it would probably be the Suicide Squad yeah I would say the Suicide Squad is more rewatchable yeah but I do I still think Don't Breathe is a brilliant film I mean I would never watch Hard Boiled again ever. <laughs> You're oh, look at this uh, lovable psychopath gunning down people with gay abandon. Yeah, but you would watch the Suicide Squad again. All those lovable psychopaths. Yeah, but they're made out. Gunning down people. But, but they make a point. The filmmakers make a point of saying, these are bad people, aren't they? Yeah, but they're cops. Whereas in Hard cops, Boiled, <laughs> it's just like... Cops are terrible people, so well, it's yeah, fine. that's true. Okay, yeah, well, you know. uh, I'll get you next time. Right, that was cool. So, on to this week's top. Five. Mm. So this week we are going to do top five team movies. Whoever gets the most correct guesses of the mm. other person's top five gets to choose next week's film. Oh yeah. The loser has to do a forfeit. The loser will have to dish out some vigilante style justice, just like the, the members of the Suicide Squad. You know, they do it by yourself, or you can form a squad to help you out. That sounds like it could. Guess in a lot of trouble, but such is the game. A lot is at stake in this game. I've been mauled by a tiger. Ben spent seven years in prison. It's not a joke. No, it's not a joke. And yeah, I had the mm. forfeit last week as well, which I'll tell you about after we've finished our top five. Go for it, mate. Okay. Apollo 13. No. Mm. But good guess. I do love that film. I didn't, didn't really think of it as a team, but uh, I suppose they are. Yep. Brilliant. So... Good films that I know you love that you don't choose. Mm. In fairness, it's, I've, all the ones I've chosen above it are, are ones I prefer. So Okay, fine. Good. So all right. Suck it. Suck it, mate. Yeah. <laughs> suck it. Yeah. Suck it. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to say The Avengers. Do I have to choose a specific one? Yes. It's definitely not going to be Age of Ultron. Probably don't think it's going to be the first one either, actually. I think it's going to be... Yeah, I'm going to say Avengers Infinity War. Yeah. Too obvious, yep. mate. Yeah, I think it's, it's brilliant. It's really good. It's the best Marvel film. Yeah, I would agree. Okay, your guess. For you, duplicate mm. Ghostbusters. Nah. Oh, for God's sake. I think I've approached this as more of like there's an assembly. The only person that's added into the group really is Winston Zedmore. The three main people are already in place at the start of the film. Yeah, but... I think it's brilliant. It's one of my top favourite films, but I... All right, go on. Uh... I'm going to say Ocean's Eleven. No. Ooh. Well, I watched it recently, actually, and it was it was a lot longer than I remember it to be. It was enjoyable. Mm -hmm. but it did go on a bit. That is. Okay. Uh, pff, this would be a duplicate. Mm -hmm. Twelve Angry Men. Not seen it. Oh, brilliant. Well, I mean, I think that means I win. Oh, got to do better at this. <laughs> you have fallen off a cliff, mate. I'm very interested to see what you came up with. Go on, what was your top five then? Okay. Aliens. Mm, yeah, of course. Predator. Heat. Yeah. Ronin, which I think is massively underrated. Mm. And also Sorcerer, which again, I think is maybe the most underrated film I can think of. The first third of the movie is just four different vignettes of these <laughs> four different yeah. people, horrible in different ways, and then being sent to a horrible colony in South America. It's awesome. Yeah, it's a great film. What are yours? Avengers Infinity War. Yeah. Ghostbusters. Yeah. Seven Samurai. Mm -hmm. Twelve Angry Men. Mm -hmm. And The Usual Suspects. Yeah. Mm. Mm. How are you feeling, Ben? Mm. You look as uh, mournful as Jason usually does after you've had a good kicking. He's going to get it tonight. <laughs> yeah, that lad is in big trouble. He's going to wish he'd stayed in the basement. <laughs> Okay, so this week I have to commit an act of vigilante justice. Mm -hmm. Last week I lost mm -hmm. and I had to punch my brother-in-law in the face. Now, what I wanted was for this not to have any long-term repercussions on my family. Yeah. Or, and on my relationship with him. Mm -hmm. So I tried to engineer it in such a way that we could move on afterwards. And Well, this is what happened. 
One haircut, please. Hello, brother-in-law. Oh, hi, Ben. You cut your hair, mate. What? Your hair. You've had a haircut. No, I haven't. Uh, you definitely had a lot more hair the last time I saw you, mate. No, I didn't. Okay. Are you trying to get a rise out of me? No, I'm just... Don't worry about it. You know, I just came to give you this expensive bottle of whiskey, but I don't know if you deserve it now. Oh, I'm sorry, mate. I'm... I really didn't mean to upset you. It's okay, I'm just I'm just very sensitive about my hair. I've been told I look like Kevin Bacon in the film Death Sentence with really short hair. You know at the end when he goes completely mental. I haven't seen it. Right. But 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 why would I want to look like that? I suppose you wouldn't. You just you really look like you've had a haircut. <laughs> you just punched me in the face! Yeah, I did. And I'll do it again if you keep making wisecracks about my hair. I won't. I'm sorry. You should be. I'm going to go. And please, next time I see you, don't mention my hair. I won't. I promise. What about that bottle of whiskey? Hmm. Maybe next time. Right. See, I think that went pretty well, actually. Yeah, I did a great job. I think that was pretty smart. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so... Next week's film is 1991's The Last Boy Scout, buddy cop action comedy film starring Bruce Willis and Damon Wayans, written by Shane Black and directed by Tony Scott. I will check that out. Yeah. Lovely. Well, thank you for listening. Hope you've enjoyed the show. We're on the social media. Do it, mate. We've got a podcast. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's called Watching Films on the Toilet. Yeah, much better than this tribe. Way better. So, yeah, check that out. Mm. And um, be your best self, yeah? Be kind to yourself. Apart from if you're James Cameron and you're going around stealing cats to be horrible to them. I mean, yeah, I'm starting to think that maybe I should just carry on with these projects and you can just do your own thing. I might give Ron Howard a call and just maybe clear the air for me. If you want to make a film with somebody who goes around skewering live cats, that's up to you. Okay, well... Excuse me, there's only one more thing to do. Keep flashing. Bye. Bye. Bye.